Okay, so that's some basic configurations. Now let's use an example to understand these configurations and learn how to do the configuration of OSPF. So this is an example. Think of this network. We have three routers. R1 and R3 are connected with a subnet. These two routers are connected by router 2. So in this network, we want to set up the OSPF routing um, to let uh, any node uh, successfully find the routing and uh, arrive the destination. So the whole configuration can be divided into three steps. We need first to configure the interface. We need to uh, set the IP address and mask for the interface. And then we need to configure the OSPF routing protocol. And finally, let's, uh, let's check whether our OSPF works well, whether the network is connected. So first, let's configure the interface. So that is very straightforward. Actually, we have talked about that in previous slides. So here, we only give a review for the content. Now, first, let's uh, configure the router one. For router one, they have two interfaces. So uh, let's first create the loopback interface. We assume this subnet to be the loopback zero and then give the IP address. Um, this is a loopback, so we set the network part to be 32-bit. And then we create another interface and set the IP address for the other interface. Similarly, for R3, we can do the same thing for the two interface IP address configuration. And for R2, we can also configure it using these two commands. Then let's configure the OSPF. So for OSPF, actually, it's not quite easy. Let's study carefully. So first, we need to go into a router. So for example, we go into the R1's router's device view. Then we need to create an OSPF process. So here, we use this OSPF1 to set up this OSPF process. And we can add this router ID behind. It means the OSPF1 on this router. And then we set different areas. So here we want to set these three interfaces in the same area, the area zero. And these three interfaces set to be the area one. So first we create area zero. And then we go into the area zero to uh, set up the uh, network network ID, uh, IP, and also its inverse mask. So here you can see that uh, this is the inverse mask because for this loopback network, the mask is 32-bit. So the reverse should be all zero. And similarly for this network, it's 30, 30. So the inverse should be 0 0.3. So that's finish the configuration of R1. Similarly, we need to configure R2. And in R2, actually, the difference is that we need to configure two areas on it. So first, we go into area zero to set up this connection, and then go into area one to set up this interface. Similarly, for R3, we can do the configuration for this one and this one. That's all. Then after all these configurations, we have set up the connection, set up the network. Now we only need to verify whether this configuration works well. So how to do the verification? First, let's check the neighbor relationship. So if we check the neighbor of R1, let's think of which one should be the neighbor. Yeah, R2 should be R1's neighbor. So here we didn't check the R1's neighbor. Instead, we check the R2's neighbor. So we first go to the router two and then display OSPF here. Then we can see that there are two neighbors here, one with neighbor ID one and another with neighbor ID three. And now the state has been full. So full means that the adjacency between these two routers and these two routers 
has successfully been achieved. And here is the area ID. You can see that this router is within area zero and this router is within area one. Next, let's check whether this network is reachable, connected, and can we successfully to check to find the routing table correctly. So first, uh, let's check R1's routing table. So you can see that there are three entries. With these two entries are direct routing, only this one is generated by OSBF dynamic routing. And this line uh, tells us that if we want to arrive three, the network three, then we need to go from the next hub of this interface. Yes, that's correct. So our configuration is correct. And to double check whether this destination can be reachable, then we can use ping to ping from this network to the other network. And there is a reply to say that, okay, so there are two hub in between. The round trip time is 50 megasecond and the uh, bytes of the ping packet is 56. So that's all for the verification. It means the OSPF works very well. It can construct the routing table correctly, and also it can make the whole network reachable. Okay, so that's all for the OSPF protocol. So to summarize this talk, actually in this talk, we talk about this uh, OSPF routing protocol. This is a very important routing protocol. This is an intra-AS routing. Uh, it is run within one autonomous system, and uh, it is a link state routing algorithm based routing protocol. Um, in this talk, actually, we described the basic concepts of OSPF. We described the application scenario, and we also give, give you the basic configurations of the OSPF. So for the basic concepts, you should know what is the router ID, what is the area, what is the neighbor table, the LSDB table, the routing table, uh, and for the uh, application scenario, you need to know that uh, sometimes we need to construct multiple areas in, in one OSPF domain if the network is too large. And we need to establish the neighbor relationship and adjacencies. These two relationships are different. For this one, it's very easy. We only need the hello message. But for adjacency, we need a lot of message exchange to finally achieve the synchronization of multiple routers of their uh, link state database. And then we give some more interesting details. For example, we know uh, how to transmit link state advertisement, how to calculate the shortest path, how to specify the OSPF area. But for more OSPF information, actually, you need to continue your study in the higher level certification courses, the HCI Professional Data Com certification courses. So that's all for this lecture. Thank you very much.